Welcome back everybody to our Great Minds in Philosophy series. We're continuing talking about John Rawls, the first of our great philosophers, and we're going to continue by focusing on the idea of the original position in this lesson. But we're going to talk about some of the externalities that were applied by Rawls uh, in relation to achieving the most just outcome and the most just settlement for society. This involves an examination of an idea which he calls reflective equilibrium. Ultimately, in the previous lesson, we explored the concept of the original position and the thought experiment which, in which the original position is constructed. And what the original position essentially allows us to do is to construct a society uh, that is the most just and uh, fair for everybody. And the idea here is that if you are a person who was put behind a veil of ignorance, i.e. you have no idea whereabouts within the society you are going to be placed when this society is then constructed, you would serve to uh, construct a society that advantages the most people in the best way possible, essentially. So if you were very, very rich and you knew that you were very, very rich uh, and you went to go and construct a society, you would probably construct a society that has low taxes, which allows you to have more money. Um, but if you had no idea if you were rich or poor, then you would probably want to construct a society that has a strong welfare program and strong welfare state, which essentially allows for, even if you were poor, um, you have the ability to uh, be able to benefit from the state in terms of uh, redistributive justice. That's generally the idea of the original position. This ex lesson examines one of the subsidiary principles of the original position, and this is this idea of reflective equilibrium. Ultimately, I'm just going to explain what reflective equilibrium actually means uh, before we actually get into what Rawls uses it for. A reflective equilibrium is essentially the idea of um, uh, arriving at a, a moral position uh, on the basis of a number of iterative um, back and forths, essentially. So you you essentially um you essentially um see that a situation might not be a uh, particularly moral or there might not be an agreement between various contrasting opinions and then you to achieve e uh, reflective equilibrium uh, is to essentially adjust uh, your moral position in such a way as so as such that everybody would agree uh, to their position uh, that is ultimately established that is what a reflective equilibrium essentially tells us um is the process now essentially what uh, the concept of reflective equilibrium seeks to do in Rawls's uh, political philosophy in the original position is uh, to further add to the conceptualization of the original position. Because what Rawls does is he doesn't just suggest that the original position is the perfect way in which society may be ordered. Uh, on the contrary, in fact, he argues that uh, the original position may not necessarily produce the most just outcome that was intended. He argues that there could be a situation where the original position does not create the, the ideal society for the most amount of people. And so it may be the case, for example, that running this thought experiment could yield to a result which may clash with some of our most fundamental and deeply held values. And so as a result of this, uh, what the solution to that problem is, well, you could say we could abandon these fundamental values. Or on the other hand, we could say, well, why don't we implement this idea of reflective equilibrium? The idea where we can adjust the original position such that we can attain the most fundamental values within society and also achieve the most just outcome for everybody within society. So the idea of reflective equilibrium is almost seen as a, a second uh, stage of the test where we have the original position and if the original position um, yields a result that is not entirely just and equitable for everybody or is something that maybe contrasts with fundamental values, then we can make adjustments to it in order to achieve the most just outcome. It doesn't uh, Rawls does not accept that we have to take the original position in whatever result it gives us, and that is the only thing that we can do. He recognises that you can make adjustments, which is what reflective equilibrium exists to do. And so what Rawls is doing here is essentially looking to work from both ends, with the aim of making adjustments in order to formulate a more substantial theory of justice. It involves stopping uh, to examine whether or not it is pertinent to adopt or to endorse the results of the original position once a formulation has been made. So again, he's not just saying that we have a ri an original position, we have the results of said original position, and we are just going to accept it without any kind of formulation. 
we can then look to uh, see about the results and to think about, well, can we make any changes to it to achieve this equilibrium? So ultimately, this is an, a, an, an additional flexibility that is given within Rawls's political philosophy. He does not accept, therefore, that there is a single um, outcome that is, that is going to be necessary. He does not also accept that uh, whatever outcome comes from the original position is the only outcome that can be necessary for achieving a just society. Instead, he very flexibly allows for the, uh, the, the adjustments of that particular um, thought experiment. And the beauty of reflective equilibrium is the idea that, at its heart, it is not a full theory of justification for the moral values that we hold and for the moral values that we're going to apply to political institutions. Instead, it operates uh, as an adjustment process. And the way in which um, he describes this in A Theory of Justice is done through the idea of pruning and adjusting. So uh, the idea of making very small iterative changes to achieve the best outcome possible. And so ultimately, the search for reflective equilibrium involves the perfection from the perspective of making adjustments to one's moral theory. The ultimate end goal is to reach equilibrium for everyone within society. If you were to Google e reflective equilibrium, um, you will get the result that essentially it is a state of balance or coherence among a set of beliefs arrived at by a process of deliberative mutual adjustments among general principles of, or and particular judgment. That is the the, the dictionary definition or the Wikipedia definition that is if that if you Google it, and this applies very nicely to this idea of uh, the original position, the idea of trying to establish some kind of balance or coherence among. A set of beliefs that are often um, very, very different. Everybody in society have different sets of moral and ethical and political beliefs. But the idea of reflective equilibrium is to bring about a balance between those beliefs um, through the process of deliberate and mutual adjustment of your own uh, understandings of, of general principles. 